Hello, this is Alex C. Talander. When you made the decision to become a patron of the Ostium Podcast, you were assigned a number, a door unique to you. There was a reason for that. It is possible that Ostium has not always been abandoned, not always population zero. Perhaps at one time there were people, from the future, the past, who traveled through the doors of Ostium to different places in time and space to learn and educate and record their experiences. Perhaps these recordings are still in existence. Welcome to the Ostium Files. Ostium File number 144. Of the many places you visited before via a door in Ostium, this one has to be one of the least impressive. It's just drab and depressing. A mountainous region. You have a feeling you're up north somewhere in the world, Canada or Russia or somewhere in Scandinavia. It's a pastiche of greys with a leaden sky. It's lightly raining. There are trees, sort of. They're dead, blackened stumps. The ground is a scorched soil where life couldn't live. It's also cold. Bloody cold. You're wondering how long you can actually stand this. <laughs> well, hello, my dear. How nice of you to pay me a visit. He appears out of nowhere. He's tall and lean, pale, definitely Nordic. And wearing a helmet bearing two long, curling horns almost touching the back of his head. And welcome to Thimblewinter, the beginning of the end of everything. You have two questions for him. What's going on and who are you? Don't you know, my dear? This is Ragnarok, and I am your guide to the end of everything. You can call me Loki. You wonder if your mouth has hit the ground. You use one of your hands to close it. Shall we begin then? Wonderful! He grabs your hand and starts skipping along without touching the ground. Okay, the laws of physics and reality don't apply here. Then again, you're holding hands with a Norse god, so duh. Wait, wait, here's something you'll love. Look up. Up there, high into the sky. Do you see it? He is pointing. You follow his finger and don't see it. You stare and stare, then pull back, taking in the complete picture. Then you see it. There's a giant upper jaw of a dog or a wolf reaching over the world, consuming it. That is Fenrir, the great wolf. Oh, and look over there. You turn to the direction Loki is pointing and something amazing is erupting downward from the dark heavens. A massive figure wreathed in giant's flames, brandishing a mighty sword, swooping down, followed by an army of small black creatures brandishing weapons and hate. They appear to be riding a rainbow that is turning to blackness and ash before your very eyes. That is Surtur, the fire giant, followed by the sons of Muspel, they ride across Bifrost, which is crumbling beneath their very feet. Isn't it beautiful? You don't know what to say. You have nothing to say. Also, if this is truly Ragnarok and this is Loki, you know you don't need to say anything. Loki is going to be Loki and keep narrating these strange times. And now we must embark. Loki says, and swoops as light as a fairy up the side of a giant boat that has appeared from nowhere. Its hull stands before you, domineering and assuming. You study the wood and see that it cannot be a substance of trees. It looks like billions and billions of fingernails of different sizes and shapes and thicknesses, some dark and blackened, others dent and white. 
Come along now, Loki calls, tossing a rope ladder over the side. You quickly ascend and pull yourself on deck. Welcome aboard the Naglfar, built of the fingernails of the dead. And this is our mighty captain, Hiram. Loki aims his pointy chin at a giant made of ice and pointed edges. Its face is jagged and chilling, the eyes solid black opals. You quickly look back to Loki, not wanting to stare at that terrifying visage anymore. The great ship Nagelfar is crewed by a conglomeration of other giant ice creatures and monsters that you wouldn't want to imagine in your worst nightmares. The crew begins pulling on mighty oars, and the ship moves at an incredible speed, ascending into the impending sky. It doesn't take long to reach the destination, a massive plain stretching what looks to be hundreds of miles. Upon are amassed great armies prepared for battle, prepared for death. This is where you get off. Loki suddenly says, grabbing you around the midriff and throwing you over the side. It feels like you fall for hundreds of feet for multiple minutes, but it must be much shorter and less than that because you hit the ground hard but alive. A great horn roars across the plain, deafening in its volume, and the last battle of all time begins. You see and recognize the gods, the one eye, Odin, riding on a mighty steed, making straight for the wolf, Fenrir, now grown huge. Thor rides in a chariot pulled by goats the size of bullocks, headed for the Midgard serpent, Mjolnir at the ready. Frey has sword ready and engages with the monstrously flaming Surtur, whose own flaming sword is beyond formidable. Frey is the first of the Aesir to fall. The final fight wages on for hours, days, months, perhaps years, you cannot tell. You just watch upon your hill, seemingly impervious to it all, disconnected from it as if those fighting below cannot even see you. Blood of red, black, blue, and green has soaked the plain, a rainbow of pain and suffering and death. Thor has finally slain the Midgard Serpent, its corpse now nothing more than a massive tube of dead meat. Thor has smashed its brains out with Mjolnir, leaping back to get away from it, but not far enough. The snake's venom sacs erupt, covering the Thunder God in thick black. He lets out a grunt of pain and then falls, smote upon the plain his life and world ended. Odin has fought long and well, but is no match for the giant Fenrir, who eventually snaps up the Allfather's spear, swallowing it whole like a simple chicken bone, and then lunges, consuming the great One-Eye. Eventually all will fall upon the plain except for Heimdall, the Watcher of the Bridge, and Loki, who engage in one last fight to the death. This one doesn't take long, and soon both are mortally wounded, falling to the ground and eventually dying in turn. And that seems to be the end of it all, but you know it not to be. Behind the facade of this world, you see the great tree, Yggdrasil, standing tall and lording over all. It is unaffected, and within its branches harbors new life. A rebirth. You recognize this for what it is, the start of something new. The turning of a new wheel, a new life. You also recognize it as your cue. You turn and make your way down the hill that has been your home for this last battle, traveling along with confidence. It takes long and you cover much distance, but at the same time not. Then you see the door standing there and pass through it with your unique tale to tell. <laughs>